When you're building a cage, especially when you're reusing older wire, I would never use wire like this for a parrot cage. But for a quail cage, it's perfectly fine. It's old. It's probably 20 years old. This weld broke loose. I bent the wire on this corner. And this, this wire at the top broke loose. What is vitally important, no matter what kind of cage you're building, is always clip loose any of these extra pieces of wire. Now I'm going to have to find that. That didn't affect the integrity of the cage. I have a clip here. I have a clip here. This piece of wire closes in the gap. It is good wire. But I'm building another quail cage. This one, I'm not, I'm not reusing a rabbit. I'm, I'm reusing wire from a rabbit cage. But I'm kind of building this one from scratch. I'm only building it 12 inches high. The others, those, uh, are 18 inches high. And so I'm going to come up with legs for them. I'm going to put this tiny one on top. I don't know if I'm going to build a fourth one. But I don't know if you can see it. There's a squirrel in the tree up there. That is a hickory nut tree. Squirrel, literally a squirrel. I hope I don't have ADD. I probably do. Oh, that whole tree is full of squirrels. Okay, back to the cage. I'm going to use this for my Celadon uh, Caternix quail. I will have it inside a building. They're not going to be out in the elements. I'm not sure precisely where I'm going to put it. Maybe in the big walk-in aviary where um, the parakeets are flying loose. I think that might be okay. Each of these cages slightly different size. They're all roughly two feet from front to back and 36 inches across. Actually, they're 35 inches across. That's, that's another story that was tedious, making them 35 inches. Um, I have these closet shelf support upright rod things that I'm never going to use for their intended purpose. So I'm going to use them for legs. I've thought long and hard about how to attach them to the cages. And I've realized zip ties are just the way to go. You can see over there I've actually put the rods on the insides of the cages. And that was just too much trouble. I'm not looking to spend, you know three weeks and a thousand dollars trying to make this look special look nice uh, I need functionality I need functional and I need cheap and I need quick and easy so I'm just going to zip tie these to the outsides of the cages I've already done that on the bottom side that's going to work extremely well because I have to cut the wire to be able to feed that through and the first and second cages, it's fine pushing this rod through the cage, but the the third and the fourth, it's just impossible to, to put this closet rod thing in. So I am trying to leave three inches in between the cages. Um, my plan is to slide, use feed sacks in there uh, to use that uh, instead of a tray. I hate cleaning tr trays, so with the feed sacks, I have, you know, I have a 20 a week. Uh, so I can just pull those out, dump them off, knock them off into a garden, a compost area somewhere. Uh, and then I, I burn the feed bags. That's really the only thing that I can do with them. If I were to try to throw them all away, yeah, they would go to a landfill. But they uh, <laughs> fill up my little dumpster and my trash cans. So I'm just going to zip tie these to the outside. Alright, I didn't record any of that. <laughs> This thing is way too high. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I am I am 6'3". Six 6'3 three. Six three comes to about right here. So, almost 7. Almost 8 foot tall. I can, I can reach more than 8 foot with that on my tippy toes. That's just about it. Okay, so I'll either cut this off. Don't know that I'll be able to add it to the bottom. I'll cut it off and use it somewhere else or I'll just leave it there 
worst case scenario. It can be a very temporary holding cage for something. Uh, it could be a grow out pen for something. But you can see I've left room in between. I'm gonna put feed bags in there to catch to catch the droppings, the, the manure. And you can see it's six inches higher in the back than it is in the front. So the eggs are gonna roll out. I know that these two top cages, the eggs will come out from here. Let me go get an egg. These are the Celadon Coternix eggs. And they may roll at a speed, they may not even roll. They may not even roll. They're not gonna roll. Okay, so. Yeah, they will roll with the quail walking around in the cage. They will roll. I may need to put a piece of something. Don't know what. To keep the eggs from banging against the wire. I will figure that out later. But right now I have a good, safe, clean place to put my quail. I will put automatic feeders in here. This is an open where the rabbit feeder was when this used to hold a rabbit cage. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but this is what's called baby saver wire for rabbits. It has the half inch openings at the bottom. And then it's one continuous piece of mesh. It has the one inch by two inch openings. These cages don't have the baby saver wire. So the eggs can just roll right out of these, uh, possibly in theory, yeah. So the top ones will probably just be grow out cages, holding cages, and then I'll put the breeding groups in these bottom two cages. And I will have automatic watering because you know I don't like cleaning, changing water bowls every single day. Uh, I gotta go, I gotta go to work. Uh, I gotta get a shower and get ready. God bless you, I love you, bye-bye. Turn your head. Uh, are you the good one? Huh? Are you the good one? I think you're the good one. You're my favorite little key cap. This is, of course, Panda Cat, and I call him Jasper. Don't know why, because your name is Panda Cat. You're slipping. You're slipping. You're going to fall. Well, come on up here, Smokey. There's room in my belly for both of you. On my belly, not in my belly. On my lap. How about that? There's room for both of you on my lap. Certainly not in my belly. We're not in Ohio. We haven't gotten to the point where we eat cat shit. <laughs>